Hey everybody, before I get started, I just wanted to mention a couple of ways that you can engage with me on a more personal level. I have a few avenues set up and I keep focusing on one and I figured, why don't I make a short little video talking about all of them real quick before we get into these uh, episodes. So first thing, Patreon. There's a link in the episode description and every episode description to the Patreon, as well as uh, a video on the feed called Major Announcement that has all the details of what each tier offers and how much they cost. I implore you to check that out. I offer a lot of cool shit for my patrons. Uh, second thing, the Discord channel. There's also a Discord link in the episode description and in every episode description. I have multiple channels set up there for each show that I'm covering, and it's a great way to just engage with me. I have a channel set up for... Uh, uh, MMA talk as well. I'm a big MMA fan. So if you're an MMA fan, you can check that out as well. There's a link to the discord in the episode description. And then lastly, oh, the Facebook and Twitter, social media, follow me on there. I post news on there. When I say news, I mean like, hey, I'm stopping covering this show. Hey, I'm starting covering this show. Let me know what you think about this. I do uh, live watches of things on Facebook where like I'll check in and say, I'm watching so-and-so show. And then I'll like live comment while I'm watching it. And that'll be cool if maybe you watch that show too and you want to watch along with me or you're watching it later and you'll see my thoughts, which are usually pretty entertaining because I'm usually pretty high when I'm writing them. So uh, check out all those links in each episode description and let's talk about this episode. Peace. One mic, one mic. Yeah. All I need is one mic. One mic. Yeah. All I need is one mic. Hey everybody, welcome back to One Mic, where I watch shit so you don't have to. And today I'm here to talk about episode 8 of the FX and Hulu limited series, Flashman is in Trouble, entitled The Liver. Uh, before I get started though, real quick, I wanted to first apologize for what is probably going to be a kind of a weird sounding voice. I'm getting over some conge congestion that I brought back to America from Canada, and uh, I'm still kind of dealing with that, so I'm going to sound a little weird. You might hear me sniffling. Whatever. <laughs> deal with it. <laughs> um, and then the other thing real quick, if you're not uh, following the Facebook page, I put an update on what's going to be happening on this channel for like the remainder of the year and the start of 2023. I laid out a whole lot of shit like here's what's going on. Here's what I got planned. Here's what's in the works, like a whole update thing. So if you're not following the Facebook page, I implore you to do so. I did a post on here too as well, but I don't know how uh, text post hit people's feeds on YouTube. I would imagine they don't. <laughs> so at least not in a in a way where a lot of people are going to see them. So uh, check that out if you want to know what to expect over the course of, I'd say, maybe like the next three weeks or so. Uh, and then going forward when, when full coverage is going to start again on certain shows. Uh, so moving on, talking about this episode title, uh, first and foremost, because I think the episode title is interesting because a lot of times episode titles tie in to like big events that take place within the episode. And this title, I think, is a little bit more nuanced in that uh, this episode, I think, is about two two things, two things that we're meant to take away. And I'm going to talk about those two things in, 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 you know, when we get talking about the episode, but one of those things is, I think, healing. And this title, I can't remember what episode it was. There was some episode where Toby says something to the effect of uh, talking about how the liver is like, uh, resilient and regenerative and all of those sorts of things. And I think that's why this episode is called The Liver because it's about how we need to be like that or how we can be like that as it pertains to life and relationships, being resilient, resilient, getting through these hard times, regenerating, rediscovering who we are, becoming a new person. All of, all of these thoughts and ideas that this show has laid out throughout the course of the season, I think can be encompassed in this episode title for the finale, which I think is is clever, and then uh, just the uh, well the quote from from Toby, which I I, I kind of wish the quote had come up again at some point. I didn't feel the need to go back and look for it because I remembered it when I saw the episode title. But yeah, I think I think it's a nice callback to that quote, and I think it, it is a title that I think encompasses the entire season. So uh, good work there. Um, as far as the episode, I kind of feel a way about this episode, and, and, and hear me out. I like it a lot, and in some ways I don't. But the ways that I don't like it are not flaws within the show or flaws in the episode. It's just like characters in this episode express viewpoints that I just fundamentally don't agree with. But the reason that this isn't a, a knock on the episode, because a lot of times, I what do I talk about? Implausibility of character behaviors and actions. I don't think that anything that I didn't agree with is implausible. 
it's very much understandable human behave behavior that any number of eight out of ten people might feel that way. So it's not something I'm gonna look at the episode title and be like, no, that's fuck that. That's implausible. That no one feels that way or does it. I understand how people would feel the way that these characters feel in this episode. I there's just parts that I just don't fundamentally agree with. So uh, let's talk about this episode. Uh, before I get into it, I, I want to apologize again. Like I'm having like all like I said, all kinds of like head congestion issues. But like it, I've been off for a week on my little Christmas break. There's so much going on. If you're gonna read that Facebook post, I don't have time to fuck around. I need to get this video out. But like my mouth is like working up like <laughs> like these ridiculous amounts of saliva, and I'm just like, what the fuck is going on? But um, I'm gonna apologize for that. But I, I'm struggling, y'all. I'm trying to get through it. But Hey, this train don't stop for anybody, including uh, me or my nasal passages. Uh, so, like I said, I think there's two big takeaways from this episode. I already alluded to one, which was uh, healing, which I'm going to talk about at the end because I don't have as much to say about that. But the first I think is that I think we are uh, we are supposed to understand that there are a lot of parallels between Rachel and Libby and their lives, not their lives, but how they're feeling in these moments as it pertains to their uh, to their marriages. You know, a good portion of this episode is spent telling Libby's story, and it starts with what I want to point out how much I like this. This episode starts with Libby narrating about how she told Toby everything that she learned, and I like that we didn't have to hear her tell Toby what we already saw last week. She's just like, yeah, I told Toby everything. I, I like that because that's that's fact that we didn't need. We don't need to hear Toby hearing about it. We need how Toby feels about it. We need Toby's reaction. And uh, boy, boy, oh boy, do we ever get it. Uh, Toby, Toby very much gives no fucks about what's going on with Rachel at all. And Libby is very much taken aback by this. And, and what I loved about this aspect of this episode, and I think about this show as a whole, is God damn it, I see both sides. And I can I I I don't really hold either viewpoint against that person. Like Toby's callousness about Rachel, I don't hold that against Toby. I don't think that makes Toby a bad guy. And Libby being taken aback by Toby's reaction, feeling that he should be more understanding and caring in that scenario i understand why libby would feel that way too you know from toby's perspective you're telling him about a woman he married and had children with who saw fit to abandon her her children and when i say that, say abandon her children because like not even her like saying she abandoned her family because i don't think that properly conveys the severity of what she did she is a mother who abandoned her children to have a weekend of sexy yoga why the fuck would he care about what she's going through? Fuck her, from Toby's perspective, right? But then from Libby's perspective, Toby isn't understanding the severity of what Rachel was dealing with and how real and understandable and relatable that those feelings were uh, for Libby, like how she understood what Rachel was dealing with. But Toby doesn't have the insight that Libby has or that we had seeing that episode last week so he doesn't really know or understand what Rachel dealt with and because those things were never conveyed to him. Like those things that like the, the her experience with the doctor that happened while he was out of the room. You know, these these feelings that she has about how she grew up versus how Toby grew up and how that manifested into the people they are today. These things weren't talked about. And I talked about communication with them last week. And I like that's why Toby feels the way he feels and why Libby is so taken aback by it. Because they're because of the communication, like he has no idea what Rachel was going through. So it's like I, I I see both sides. And Libby brings up the whole idea of putting on the oxygen mask before your kids as a way of saying like Rachel needed to take care of herself. You know how they say you're supposed to put the um, oxygen mask on. And I love how Toby is like, no motherfucker, that is a metaphor and not a lifestyle. And that is such a good point. Don't stand in front of me and try to make the put myself before my kids argument like get that raggedy ass airplane shit out of here i thought that was a great like toby was being a dick in that scene but he was so fucking right do not use that oxygen mask bullshit over like oh i needed to go take care of myself so i'm gonna drop my kid i'm gonna throw my kids into the to the house of my ex-husband and i'm gonna go bail for a week of fucking my side dude like th that is not a put your oxygen mask on first uh, scenario. Fuck out of here with that. I love that he called her on that because that was bullshit to me. 
Um, but um, the, uh, <laughs> I was about to say something that I just don't feel anymore. <laughs> uh, but we later see Libby slowly making the connection and I think understanding how similar her situation is to Rachel. She talks about a lot of things I was saying last week. You know, when I talked about looking back fondly on your youth versus uh, longing for it. You know, she talks about like not feeling like herself, uh, having having unlimited choices when she was younger, but not not anymore. Uh, she didn't realize that the choices that she made in the past, which the choice she I didn't realize she said something like I didn't realize then that those choices would limit my choices later. And the vagueness of that statement, I think, undermines her saying, I didn't realize that getting married and having kids would make it so I couldn't do whatever the fuck I wanted to do later in life. Like, that's not, mm -mm, no, I'm not with that. It's like, that, this is the stuff that just didn't land with me because I just fundamentally don't agree with her viewpoint. To me, she sounded entitled. I want to do what I want to do, but I can't do it anymore. She sounded like immature, childish, selfish, like she made marriage sound like a prison that exists to limit your happiness. And I'm like, that's not like you in it for the wrong. Re like if that's how you feel, you in it for the wrong reasons. And like, I know you might, you know, get married at one age, feeling that optimism for the future. And then maybe you reach the point. I think she what she say 13, 14 years in her marriage. She is. Or maybe she doesn't feel that way anymore. But that's still not going to be a sympathetic viewpoint to me. The, uh, the viewpoint of like, oh, I can't do what I want to do anymore. I don't have unlimited choices. I don't have my whole life ahead of me. Like, boo fucking who? Like, I, I, like that, I'm mad because I can't do whatever I want to do whenever I want to do it. Because I have this stupid family now holding me back. Oh, woe is me. Like, that's, that's, I'm supposed to, like... I'm like aligned with that. Like, oh, I understand. I don't understand because I'm not a selfish bitch like that. Like, I, like, I get, like, every, my family goes before me. Like, so I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh, my choices are so limited. I can't do whatever it is that I want to do. I had my own life. No. Mm -mm. Cause it's, it's like, grow up. <laughs> like, like, that was a phase of your life. It's gone now. Look, accept that reality. Look back on it fondly. And then focus on making this new and different phase in your life as vibrant and as joyful as it can be. Don't ruin it by longing for free range dick and like hanging out with your friends all night and, and you know, while your husband raises your children. Like <laughs> that, that's not, I, I'm not gonna vibe with that perspective. Uh, uh, example, uh, when she went to Seth's party, that let me know that Libby was like, again, solely focused on herself and not in that good self-care kind of way, but in that immature, I want to do what I want to do and I'm not concerned with being a responsible wife and mother kind of way. Like, I, I don't, okay. She talked about how she was gone for all that time and well, all that time, I think she said it was like a couple of days, which seemed longer to me. Like, I didn't even think it was that long. And she said like when she came back, she was constantly doing penance and you think she'd learned a lesson like, okay, I'm here. I'm trying to make things right. I'm present in my household. I'm here to be the mother and wife that I should be. And then she's like, yeah, Seth's having a party. I can't not go. What the fuck you mean you can't not go? Like from Adam's perspective, and he was probably thinking she was starting to come around. It's like, well, never mind. Here's Libby doing the same old selfish shit and showing more commitment to her friends than to her family. Like... <laughs> I, I, in that moment, I'm just like, are you serious right now? You can't not go. It's a part, like, she don't even know it's an engagement party that time. It's just a text message from Seth. Hey, I really want you to come to this party. And she's like, oh, okay, fuck my family. I'll go to the party. Like, what, is, like, how am I supposed to, how am I supposed to feel any kind of empathy for Libby in this moment when she'd rather go to a party with Seth than stay and repair her marriage when going to parties with Seth and leaving, put, pushing her marriage and her, 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 her children on the back burner is the reason she's in this situation in the first place. And now I'm supposed to be sympathetic to that? Like, no. And that's all I saw out of Libby this episode. So, like, why am I supposed to give a fuck about now her crying, lamenting her youth? Like I said, it just comes off entitled and selfish to me. Like, oh, boo fucking who? Like, I, I don't know. It, it just didn't work for me. <laughs> um, and again, it didn't work for me as, like, uh, explanation valid explanations for her behavior as in like oh, okay well i guess i can accept her behavior because that's a good reason to behave that way like that's that that's not happening for me but like i said these aren't knocks against the episode this is me fully entrenched in these characters lives and saying like okay 
I can understand, like, I, I see how this can be a thing. I understand someone could feel that way. I understand how that can manifest. All of these things make sense. I just don't agree with it. But this is me putting myself into these characters' positions because I am so entrenched and engulfed in what's happening here. So in a way, it's complimentary to the show that I can be this passionate about these characters' decisions. So when I'm, when I'm shitting on Libby's decisions... Don't look at that as me shitting on the show or feeling like, well, you can defend Libby if you like. I see Libby's perspectives as it is. I just don't agree with them. But like, it is, it's, it's, a, it's a pro here how much I'm shitting on Libby because I'm not shitting on Libby because I'm like, this is ridiculous. I'm shitting on Libby because I just don't think that's a, a good viewpoint to have. But I very much believe that is a realistic viewpoint that exists. So... Again, I just don't, I don't want you guys to think I'm shitting on this episode. I'm doing quite the opposite. Uh, I'm displaying how passionate I was, uh, how passionate I am about these characters and their stories, which is very complimentary to the show. Uh, so the second takeaway that I mentioned earlier was about healing, right? And Libby confirms, before I even get into that, Libby confirms my theory, well, I am kind of still getting into that, about how this show is her book. And it doesn't end like I said, with like her like at a book signing reading it and she like closes the book like and that's the end. Like it doesn't end that way. But she does all but confirm that. She like lays this out to Toby. So I'm going to take that as a win and give myself uh, the pat on the back for the correct prediction. But she begins to describe the end of the book and says that, you know, maybe it just ends with Rachel returning home. You know, it's going to... Uh, it's going to be raining. She's going to open it. You're going to hear the hinges or whatever. And, it, and he's like, why would she do that? And it's like, because she was always going to come back. And we quickly come to realize this st this story that Libby is narrating. And, the, the, and I mean, like, not her narration in the show, but that she's narrating to Toby in this scene. Uh, we quickly come to the realization that this is just as much about Libby herself as it is about Toby. And, um, you know, ultimately, she does go home from Seth's party early. And Adam seems to forgive her, uh, saying she always comes home, just like she was saying. And that did kind of leave me like, why is he all of a sudden this forgiving when she hasn't really shown a change in behavior in this moment, but just a continuation of it? But, eh, like, oh, she left the party a little early, big whoop. Like, uh, whatever. I don't really know why he's so forgiving of her now when he was justifiably upset and she just continued to show the same behavior that upset him. But now all of a sudden it's okay because she comes back. That, I don't find that plausible. So I don't think that Adam's reaction is a plausible one. I think it's a plausible reaction if we don't see him, if we hadn't seen how he'd been reacting to her uh, up to this point. But like her showing the same behaviors that she showed that have upset him throughout this season and that he clearly got incredibly upset about. And then now he's like, it's fine. You always come home. Like, <laughs> no, like that... That's not plausible, but whatever. It's fine. Because uh, it's, a, it's a very minor quibble. Uh, but Toby seems to have healed as well. He's appreciating how much his, he loves his job. You know, he's like, okay, I never needed that promotion. And this is Libby narrating this with, with this weird, like, I could tell you that. And I keep thinking it's going to end up like, I could tell you that, but that's not what happened. What actually happened is Toby did something terrible. I kept thinking it was going to go that way, but it ended up going like, I can't tell you what Toby did right after I left. But he's appreciating his job, like I said. Um, he isn't upset about getting the promotion. He's like, you know, why, she's like, why would he be upset doing what he loves? Like, he's, he's appreciating his job. He's connecting with his kids. Uh, he's coaching Sally through uh, his science project. He's coaching Hannah through uh, bat mitzvah reservations. Reservations like issues with doing it, not reservations like... Tuesday at 6 p.m. table for two reservations um <laughs> and not uh reservations like Native Americans either <laughs> but I do have to question ending this episode and this series with Rachel returning because that doesn't feel like healing to me and it can be to be sure it can be but the message that I felt like the show was giving me was that Toby was getting past everything. Like, okay, I'm past Rachel. Now I'm back, you know, now I can start to appreciate my job. I can focus on my kids. I'm not so much hung up on when is Rachel going to come back? What is Rachel going to do? All this kind of stuff. So for her to return right when he's getting to this point of like, now I'm past it, that doesn't feel like healing to me. That feels like a step backwards. But at the same time, we have Libby returning to fix her failed marriage after coming to grips with her problems. And that does kind of like dovetail nicely with Rachel essentially doing the exact same thing. It's just like, ultimately, 
I think we end on this positive note of two women who feel like they lost themselves coming to an understanding of what they did wrong, what life they want to live, what kind of mother they want to be, what kind of uh, wife they want to be, and doing that. And, and that feels like a happy ending to me. So even though I'm just kind of like, I, I don't know if, if Rachel showing up again is healing, it, like it feels like a step back, it, th that's just what, that's just how I feel it would play out. But at the end of the day, how it plays out is ambiguous. There's no, there's no more episodes. There's no other book. And it might just end up being a situation where, you know, she comes back and Toby's like, fuck it. Um, let's work through this. And that's at the end of the day, really, that is that not the best possible scenario given what happened is like a reset and just like, all right, well, we figured out what we were doing wrong or, or the issues that we were having. We made the decision despite that to try to make this work. And now here we are making this work. And I think at the end of the day, that's a happy ending. And I can respect any show that can get such passionate responses out of me and not in a I'm shitting on this show kind of way, but in like, wow, this show is really resonating with me. So uh, great show, great series, really enjoyed it. Great finale. Uh, the last episode, episode seven, that's going to be one of my top episodes of the year. Uh, this show is not going to crack my top 10, but it, it'll make my honorable mentions. Spoiler alert. Uh, so if you're wondering what's coming next, like I said, check out the Facebook post. Uh, go, go over there. Uh, it's long. Forewarning, it's it's long. But check that out, and I lay out what the plan is for the next, like I said, the, the closing out of the year and for January. So until then, peace.